Chernobyl and Be My Island and a lot of that really scared a lot of environmentalists. Basically, nuclear was the Bitcoin mining of that era. There was a huge campaign by environmentalists against nuclear and it was very successful and it, it, it stymied the development of nuclear in the United States. If that hadn't happened, we would probably have a nuclear-dominated grid and we probably would not be where we are with climate change right now, I think. I think we really would be in a much safer position with more time to deal with the situation. In today's episode, we delve into the remarkable flexibility of Bitcoin miners to adapt to the supply and demand needs for energy grids. Our guest, Margo Paez, is a research fellow at the Bitcoin Policy Institute. She discusses how Bitcoin mining can revolutionize the energy sector and shift economic incentives towards renewable infrastructure. Paez also discusses climate change and the possibility for Bitcoin mining to help reduce emissions drastically by capturing methane from otherwise uneconomical sources. Join us as we uncover the potential of Bitcoin mining to reshape global energy dynamics and propel clean energy development into a new era of human flourishing. Let's hear Margot describe how Bitcoin mining is a positive force for the green energy transition. But before we do that, I want to introduce our sponsors, Stampseed, The Orange Pill App, and Swan. Our partners are businesses and people that we respect and our products that we at Bit Intelligence personally use. You're watching 21 Voices. Without further ado, here is Margot Paez in Madeira, Portugal. The most important aspect of Bitcoin mining is its flexibility. So most energy intensive industries out there cannot power off and power back on within seconds. This is a really special attribute. What makes it even better is that it's so modular and so easy to transport and set up anywhere. You have a much lower investment, so you can get into it fairly easy. And then it's paying you, right? You're getting a revenue. And so if you combine all of that, the modularity, the ability to just set up anywhere, uh, a lower capital investment, and then the ability to power on and off within seconds, and you have this really, really flexible location agnostic tool that can be part of your toolkit, your, your energy toolkit, and that can help you with grid stability, creating a base floor revenue, leapfrogging in terms of ed energy poverty, you know, there's there's so many innovations. Um, methane mitigation, you know, it's just like a second order effect, but that's what makes it so special and makes it makes flexibility the most important aspect of Bitcoin mining. How to make the network carbon negative using Bitcoin mining? It, you basically you take these sites where you have you have methane being either flared or vented for some reason. Usually it's for economic reasons, it's just uneconomical to capture it and combust it. And then also because these sites, you know, they have to exist, like a landfill or a bio waste site or a livestock, you know, waste site, right? They're gonna exist, right? And, but, but it's not economical to capture it. If you take Bitcoin miners and you put them there on that site, you then incentivize, you have a monetary incentive to capture that methane, pipe it through a combustion engine, connect some Bitcoin miners on the other end, you know, because you're generating electricity. And now you're taking methane, you're combusting it with a much higher efficiency than if you were flaring or venting. And now you're producing Bitcoin, so you're getting that revenue, but you're also reducing your greenhouse gas emissions potency and the potency of methane compared to carbon dioxide over a 20 year period is around 84 times as much. So that means that if you took one molecule of carbon dioxide and compared it to one molecule of methane in the atmosphere and all other things being equal, that one molecule of methane is going to be 84 times more potent at, at warming the planet than that one CO2 molecule. That's, that's, that's really important for us in our short-term game plan for dealing with climate change because 
we're really running out of time in terms of the net cumulative warming that we've experienced. So if we can address our methane problem, then we can buy ourselves more time to address the bigger problem, which is the CO2. So, right, CO2 is good, it's okay, but if you have too much, it throws off the, the energy balance of the planet, and it's a delicate system. So that's what we can do. We can contribute in a small or significant way, depending on how easily we can scale out with uh, Bitcoin miners on these sites. And we can help slow that warming so that we don't hit those tipping points. So it's a really, it's a really powerful idea. And Daniel Benton has been working on this uh, from a you know, venture capitalist perspective, trying to get that investment to make it possible. There, there are some challenges, you know, because there's no infrastructure, right? So you, you have to pay for that infrastructure. So it may be at times more capital intensive, even from what you can monetize alone with Bitcoin mining. But if you can combine that with some other secondary revenue sources, you might be, it might be enough to balance it out. That's basically the idea around how you can mitigate that methane using Bitcoin mining. And we really do need these solutions. The end result of that is that the hash rate, it becomes roughly carbon negative uh, because of the accounting, because you are, you're preventing that methane to go into the atmosphere and um, greens the network overall. So it's really cool in that sense. But of course, I would love to see over time the, to see that we're not just carbon negative because we're offsetting in that way, but because we actually have uh, Bitcoin miners really either taking a lot, you know, the wasted energy, whether it's flared or vented, or being situated with renewable energy or being on grids that are renewable energy dominant and providing that flexibility to help balance the grid. One way that we can overcome some of these capital intensive expenses for jumpstarting landfill mining to mitigate methane is to get the government to actually provide incentives to Bitcoin miners. So that would be, you know, could be like a tax subsidy of some kind, maybe something related to property taxes, which we've seen around flared gas mining in Texas, and I think in Montana, where you get uh, a tax break. So tax breaks are really good at incentivizing, but there could be other ways. There could be credits that you could sell in a market. That could be a, another solution. Uh, not, you know, that goes beyond just your standard carbon credit, right? There, there maybe if you, if you tie that to some other useful infrastructure that will help with the build out for renewable energy. So in other words, like, let's say Bitcoin mining on a landfill is just the way to incentivize jumpstarting the build out of the infrastructure for capturing that gas and then turning into electricity. Maybe if you tie that with renewable natural gas pipeline or you tie that with EV charging stations, right? Maybe the government would give you a credit that you could then turn around and sell on a market, like that could be something. It'd be cool to see the government come up with new ideas to, to make it possible. I mean, they know how to do it. They passed the, the IRA and they provide a lot of credits to, to boost certain industries that are tied to the renewable energy transition. So I'm sure if they just understood it a little bit better. So we have to do our part to try to educate them more on that. Please bear with us for a quick message from our sponsors. These videos take a lot of time to make and we've partnered with brands we trust like Stampseed and the Orange Pill app in order to get the funding we need to bring you these videos every week. Don't store your Bitcoin in cold storage without stamping your seed phrase on an indestructible titanium plate. Stampseed is fireproof, rustproof, impactproof, and easy to hide. It has no loose parts and will give you ultimate peace of mind that your Bitcoin is safe and sound for the long term. Click the link in the description below for 15% off your stamping kit. When I finally got Bitcoin, it hit me like a lightning bolt. It was the currency of the future, the only money that truly mattered. But there was a problem. I didn't know anyone else that thought like me. That is until I discovered the Orange Pill app. Suddenly I was connected with a network of like-minded Bitcoin enthusiasts right in my own city. 
The Orange Pill app is more than just a social network. It's a community of passionate individuals determined to change the world, one Satoshi at a time. This series is brought to you by Swan and created by Bit Intelligence. Remember to like this video and subscribe to both our channels for more videos like this every week. Thanks for watching. I don't know that we're making headway just yet because uh, one way that I would would def you know define as a metric for making headway with politicians is that the Democratic Party would start talking about how they could incentivize Bitcoin mining with renewable energy or even with nuclear or helping with build out of, of renewable energy on electrical grids. I think when I start hearing Democrats saying that with sincerity, I think that's when I know that we're making headway and we haven't gone there yet. There's still, I, I still hear a lot of negative talking points. So I think we have a long way to go before we get there. We have not been investing in nuclear energy because there was you know, a huge campaign by environmentalists against nuclear so as a result of nu the nuclear weapons proliferation, the Cold War, and then, yeah, then Chernobyl and Three Mile Island and a lot of that really scared a lot of environmentalists. So they really made, basically nuclear was the Bitcoin mining of that era, right? And it was very successful and it, it, it stymied the development of nuclear in the United States. If that hadn't happened, we would probably have a nuclear dominated grid and we probably would not be where we are with climate change right now. I think I think we really would be in a much safer position with more time to deal with the situation and to do the energy transition. So I think that was a problem, but I do know that there is some turnaround and I think it is you know, a generational thing. We need a lot more younger people in Congress who didn't grow up under that fear, who have much more of an open mind to nuclear in order for us to see a faster transition, to see more nuclear built out. Because the reality is, is the technology has been developing in the background all the time and never disappeared. And I think nuclear wants to have its moment, but it's, it's going to come probably at the end of this decade and it's not going to help us in the immediate term for the transition. But for the future, I'm hopeful that it will play a bigger role. We hope Margot has helped you understand the basic reasoning behind why Bitcoin mining holds immense promise for the future of energy production and consumption. She's illuminated the potential for Bitcoin mining to capture methane emissions and drive renewable energy innovation. Moreover, our discussion has prompted critical reflections on why nuclear energy failed to gain traction in the 20th century, offering a warning for the long-term impacts of a misinformed public in adopting or abandoning a revolutionary technology. Stay tuned and remember to subscribe for the latest recaps, insights, and films about all things Bitcoin. This is 21 Voices. If you want to watch another episode, try this one here.